So there's a few vultures around. We've got some hooded vultures over to the right in the tree, waiting for the lions to move far enough away from the carcass that they're not going to be taken out themselves if they try and go and feed. <laughs> ah, another vulture coming in. So the vultures that are circling are going to be watching out for the vultures in the tree. The buffalo is actually, it's, it's quite open even though they've got it into a bush. They are going to be watching. Yeah, there's a few more vultures up ahead as well. So this is going to be Vulture City. Probably by tomorrow. And they can be patient. They will wait. And they will wait for a few days if they have to to get at that carcass. So we've got one, two, three, still four lionesses. Trying to do a head count. Oh yes, and the so the female that we're on now is the one with the wound, I believe. Now, I think some people were saying it looks slightly larger, and it's possible that she actually joined in the hunt and possibly just tore it a little bit more. Oh, look at that. Now, I believe they did have slightly bloody faces this morning, but obviously they've had a good wash. Yeah, definitely. Read all, look at those tummies. Oh, we're going to have another little go at the buffalo. They are very happy cats now, I think. They were looking on the thin side, but now they do have a little bit of a belly on them. Not as big as what it can be. Yeah, I'm going to go and have another another go at that. I can, so I did, as the wind turned, I did have a bit of a whiff of it. Whoa. It was uh, smelling a little bit ripe. <laughs> not sure I'd want to have a meat like that, but <laughs> I'm not a lion, thankfully. But they will feed on this carcass for the next few days now. You can see unfortunately that is the easiest access where the soft tissue is so it's around the anus I believe they have eaten some around the throat as well it looks like they might have opened up the stomach if that's where the cub is starting to feed from or maybe it's just wishful thinking <laughs> So we've got five cubs and one, two, three, four, five lionesses. So I think actually that's everybody, isn't it? So it sounds like everybody is here. So perhaps my tracks this morning were that of a male rather than the female. just wondering maybe if we pull forward a little bit we might be able to see the cub because it looks like they have opened up that belly a little bit more I'm just going to turn the vehicle on sometimes just messing with the keys just warns the animals that something's about to happen because sometimes if if it's very quiet and then all of a sudden turn on they can all get a bit of a jump so yeah everybody's happy good good <laughs> oh 
another cub moving. Bless you. Oh, Picard is stinky. <laughs> I say not as much as what it's going to get, but it is a little bit ripe because it is right out in the open. You can see they've tried to push it into a red bush willow by the looks of it. Yeah, they have opened the belly up. The cub is right inside. This is not for the faint-hearted people. Hi, Roshni, asking how much the uh, the lions will actually consume, considering what's left of it. There's still quite a lot of meat on that buffalo. And they haven't really got to the, the good bits of meat yet. The leg meat and the uh, uh, the haunches. But you can see that cub's almost climbed inside. <laughs> and it's amazing, I have actually seen maggot filled carcasses and lions will still feed on that if they're hungry. And I think with the lack of buffalo around, I think these girls are going to strip this down. It, we, we, we were thinking that maybe the boys might come and find this uh, this carcass, but there's no sign of the Birmingham boys as yet. I don't know if there was any calling last night. I certainly didn't hear any calling, but I was out for the count last night. So I think there could have been a whole pride calling around me, and I would not have heard it. That's got to be pretty hot in there. <laughs> yeah. Pisces Bobby also warning the cub not to get lost in there. <laughs> See, and you guys weren't up for hunting last night. It was that old lady. She was, I think she must have initiated the hunt. Possibly on the trail of the buffalo. Um, expecting it to be at the dam, hence her climbing up onto the wall last night, very low to the wall, ears were flat, very much in stalk mode, ready to see if the buffalo were there. Let's say some of the younger members of the Pride decided no, they wanted a drink, and had the buffalo had been there, they would have uh, destroyed any chance of them sneaking up on them, but as it was, it worked in their favour, the buffalo had moved on, and uh, I think by about 8 o'clock, 8.30. That's when we heard the buffalo calls. <laughs> Hard work, little one. I think it must be. So on average, they once they have their fill, look at the claws holding on and try and tear out a nice juicy piece from inside. Look at that. Trying to anchor itself. <laughs> Chantel saying it looks like something out of a horror film. <laughs> it does a little bit. So yeah, so they'll eat their fill, and they'll digest that. And they'll uh, while the while the carcass is still there, they'll refill a little bit, and then digest a little bit more. At some stage, they will go and find water again, just to even out all the salts that they've obviously taken in with the meal. But for let's say for an adult lioness, it probably averages out for about five or six kilos of meat a day. But they can take in quite a few kilos in one sitting. I have heard for a big male lion they could take in 40 kilos of meat in one go. And as I say, those bellies just expand to quite a ridiculous size. As I say, the females do look like they're fed, but they're not looking like they're ridiculously big at this stage. 
but there's a lot of mouths to feed in this pride. So I think maybe two or three days, if that, this is going to last them. Hi Sammy. Sammy also asking where the male lions are. And yeah, it's possible that these girls didn't call because if they didn't make any contact, the male lions, if they didn't hear the buffalo calling out, it's possible that they didn't hear them. <coughs> yes, like he's climbing right inside. So they will be eating the organs, they will eat the heart and the lungs. They don't tend to eat the intestine. But the liver and kidneys, things like that are also on the menu. Oh, shame, look at the hooded vultures. Just waiting patiently. I say, if, if the pride do move further away from the carcass, then they will try their luck. Especially when they're a lot f more full and they really just can't be bothered to move. Then those vultures will come down. You're also coming to have another feed. But typical cat, they don't like being dirty. Hi Francis from Israel. Welcome on board asking what's the reason why they wouldn't eat the intestine. It's usually full of vegetable uh, vegetation, <clears throat> so uh, it probably won't taste very nice. Oh, she's toileting. Oh, I'm very glad she's done it downwind. I'm very grateful for that. This lion dung does not smell nice at all. I, I actually don't know what's worse, lion dung or carcass. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it is. I was actually looking at that, the uh, the dark patch between the legs. So it is the one that's got got the injury. Now, we think the injury came from uh, a horn. But as I say, they are pretty robust. And as long as she keeps it clean, um, I think Tristan said he could see some scar tissue. I couldn't see too well because the sun was on the screen earlier. But she... Uh, she should heal. It didn't look too deep, apparently. I think it was a superficial wound. I say animals are pretty resilient. You'll be surprised at what they can go through. There we go. <clears throat> but I mean, she doesn't look particularly stiff. She doesn't look like she's really battling with it. Hi Jacqueline, asking if it's ever been known a, a, a lion to be stuck inside a carcass. Not to my knowledge. It's not something I have heard of. Oh. So, 
I'm almost expecting this cub to go all the way in and have its head pop out the other side. <laughs> Could you see his head? So he has, so he has got to that back end. <clears throat> of course, that uh, that back bit is where the fillets are. That's the best bit. Yeah, I'm sure that sure the cook could <laughs> destroy the smell in detail, Roshni. I say we are lucky that the we are upwind, so it's not too bad at the moment. But over the next couple of days, ooh, it's going to be ripe. <laughs> it's going to be very ripe. So we're going to keep our eyes, I think, on these lines for a little while before we head off for a little drive around. So let's see how Tristan's getting on with his leopard search this afternoon. Welcome back everybody. So the cub has made its way back to who I presume is mum. So I'm just going to pull back a little bit so we can see see do we want to have a look at her because she's got i think it's the, the two cubs around her and then the rest of them are over the other side hi james Good afternoon to you. James wanting to know, or wondering if uh, Jack will take advantage of the carcass. And they could possibly, if, again, if the lions move far enough away and the jackal comes comes across, the smell's going to start wafting out and that could pull in hyenas, that could come, pull in uh, jackal, all sorts of other uh, nocturnal predators. So it depends on how close those lions are, how full their bellies are, the jackal might get a look in. So he's the same as the vultures if these lions move away from the carcass. But the moment this, this female is close enough that it's going to deter. Because even though the bush like this, because it's not that open, so they can't get away very easily. And especially if a number come down. So they've, they, they'll be very wary about making sure the lions are far enough away. Are you going to have a little go? Oh, look at that big belly. <laughs> Can you hear it panting? So it's about 28 degrees, so on a full stomach, oh, that is going to be very hot. Bless you. So what they're dropping now is going to be very strong smelling, and it's going to be very dark in colour because of all the blood they're going to be digesting that straight away from the breakfast this morning and good afternoon to you Jane Jane wanting to know why these lions are not hostile because we're close to their food and they know we're no threat and say that most of these actually all these animals will be used to seeing vehicles throughout their life you can see the cubs are growing up with the vehicles and we're not trying to steal their meat if i was to try and go and steal the meat then that would be a different story if i was to actually walk up to it or even drive right up to it and uh, start messing around with it i think that they would have something to say but because they're just they are used to vehicles being part of their everyday life it's just it's just one of those things and because we're not threatening towards them they just let us do our thing as long as we don't interfere with them <laughs> shame they're getting so bothered by flies hi snazzy 
Snazzy wanting to know why they're panting after they eat, after they eat. and it is because the the food obviously helps to stoke the furnace, and that's why warm-blooded animals have to eat to create the, the to create energy to create uh, increase the temperature of the body. So with the heat of what's going on in the digestive system, creating the heat, and combined with the 28 degrees from the sun, it's, it's going to be very hot being a lion this time of day. So it's all they can do is try and keep cool. So obviously panting, try, it does actually help to expel a lot of the temperature. In very hot temperatures I have seen uh, animals actually licking their, their four, four arms, if you like, um, so that the air can circulate over the wet areas and that helps to cool them down a bit. Especially kangaroos I've seen do that quite a lot. And obviously they live in very hot temperatures as well. Robert. Robert asking, are predators successful in uh, chasing lions away from the kill, especially scavengers, so hyenas for example? Now it's all to do with numbers. So if you have a large pride like this, it could be that the lions win out. If the hyenas bring quite a, a few other clan members and there's enough of them, it could potentially work in the hyenas favour. Now, even though there's quite a number of animals, it's only four adult uh, females that are here. So actually having the Birmingham males, sorry, five adult females here. So actually having the Birmingham males here would obviously increase their chances of holding on to this carcass. But obviously then they'd have to give some meat over to the males for doing that as well. Uh, and especially with the young cubs that they have with them, they're not going to be able to defend uh, the carcass. They would have to keep safe. Uh, so that would be another sort of stress for them. So uh, yeah, I think I think they need to maybe hope that the hyenas don't catch wind of this. Although it was sounding like possibly they knew of the kill last night. Apparently the hyenas were, were heard calling in the same area. But I think it was the contact rather than the laugh that you get. So it's usually quite a high-pitched giggle. Um, so yeah, so it really does depend on the numbers. Um, jackal... Again, if you get uh, a couple of them, they can just nip in and nip out, and that's usually what does happen. Um, I have seen a lion, a single lion, feeding on a carcass and just get irritated by the jackal, and they got irritated enough that they just obviously had enough to eat, and they went, Ugh, you know what, you have it. But I have also seen a jackal get too close, and a female lion actually took one of the jackals out. So. Again, it, it really depends on each circumstance and, you know, if the bush is thick or not, if it's open area, if there's enough escape routes, things like that. So I thought I heard some movement behind me there. It's always good, even though they're nice and relaxed, it's always good just to keep a watch out, just in case something has changed. I'm going to see if I can pull back a little bit more and just have a quick look at the lionesses over there. But they have gone flat now, so I'm thinking this could be quite a good time for us to move on out and have another drive around. Oh, are you seeing something? Who who you see? Aha! <laughs> You're being a bit gruesome. Okay, Sen Senza wants to go around the front of the carcass. To have a look so we, we can try that so if you're not keen to have a look then uh, might rather uh, look away but we'll see we'll see if we can just drive around and have a look at the front of the carcass hi Laurie asking if the vultures will eat the intestines probably Leaves the intestine lining and leave, then that will rip open and then leave the undigested or partially digested uh, matter inside the intestines. Okay, 
So yeah, so you might, might want to look away now if you don't want to see the front because the skull is exposed. So yeah, you can see there's quite a lot of the neck area and the face. The face is also quite soft tissue, which is why they would have gone for that as well. There you go, you can see the grinding teeth of the buffalo. But uh, he does look like an old boy. He, I do believe he was a, a dugger boy, which is an old buffalo male. He was broken away from the herd, he's past his prime, and now no longer really able to keep up with the herd and prefers a much slower pace of life. There's the stomach. That's another organ that's not likely to eat. Again, for the same reason. They might eat the stomach lining, but certainly not what's inside. But to be honest, they've got nice meat there, so there's no point in eating the stomach. So I think we're going to cross over to Tristan, I believe, and find out how he's getting on with tracking the leopards. Welcome back, everybody. And we've just seen this lady pull out what looks to be the liver. So she's got quite a nice dinner this evening. <laughs> Are you jealous? <laughs> Cubs kind of going, oh, that looks good. Can I have a bit, Mum? <laughs> it's like, no way. This is mine. <laughs> look at her, look at those ears. <laughs> ears are slightly flattened. So Cubs are now playing. Oh, I'm, I'm fine. I wasn't really interested. There's another lioness coming in. So the temperature has dropped. It's actually very pleasant now. Oh, she's deciding that she's just going to lie down. Oh! <laughs> Okay, we're just going to a vehicle wanting to get past us. Are you, are you able to get past us? Are you okay? Yeah. You sure? I can move forward. Let me just move forward for you a bit. <laughs> there we go. I'm just going to pull back a little bit again, just so we don't have a branch over this lady's face. There we go. Is that good, good there, Senzo? Yeah. We've got another cub coming in. Now you can see one of the cubs uh, on its back, exposing its belly. So it's nice, nice thin skin there. So with that little breeze that's coming through, that's going to help to cool them down a little bit. Is it possible to go back to the female? She's just using her carnassial shearing teeth, that's the, the side teeth, and she was just trying to chew off part of that liver. So those shearing teeth, are the, the, is the first molar and the last premolar, so the, the premolar in the top jaw and the molar in the bottom jaw, and they cross each other so it keeps the teeth really sharp. So that's why you'll find them using the side teeth to try and shear meat. And you can see she's licking the meat and their tongue is extremely rough, just like your cat. There you go, they, she's using her carnassials again there. But just like your cat at home, I'm sure if you've been licked by your cat, you feel how rough their tongue is. And it's the same for lions. 
and that helps uh, to take the meat from bone and as I say with uh, the liver there it's just helping to uh, ease it apart which is why you're seeing her licking it thanks Enzo oh we have Ellie's playing as well <laughs> they are indeed <laughs> so the cub who was almost fully into the buffalo has now walked off so one of the older lions has decided that she's going to have a go <laughs> and it sounds like you guys have had a fantastic sighting of those Ellie's it sounds absolutely wonderful and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing that footage <laughs> but this is pretty amazing as well seeing the lions dining out so this is 24 hours on or just under actually so we heard heard them first attacking the buffalo probably around 8 8 30 last night now we've still had no sign of any other lions so no Birmingham boys I don't think these girls are going to advertise the fact that they've got a kill by the sounds of it or by the looks of it but it could be that we get hyena coming in or we could get jackal the vultures are roosting in a tree unfortunately we, they've, they're a bit further down I don't I think they're behind the trees for us now you can see them trying to use their claws to anchor themselves while they try and pull out the tasty meat inside and any organs that are left so the female on the right she looked like she had the liver and if we've got any new viewers with us this is the Unkahuma pride I believe it's translated as the brown ivory and I think that's the tree that they were found underneath and it's really great to see that they're doing very well and the cubs are actually doing pretty well as well it will be interesting to see if they do call but as I say I think they probably there's the claws look at that Hi Aaron, welcome on board, asking if we see Cape Buffalo here and these are African Buffalo, uh, the Cape Buffalo are a subspecies of African Buffalo and as to my knowledge these aren't Cape Buffalo unless it's been decided they are in the few years that I've been away I say science does move on so it might be found that they are all Cape Buffalo but as I say to my knowledge this is a different subspecies but I'm not sure which one it's supposed to be hence we tend to call them just African Buffalo now looking at the horns they are quite small but he is quite an old bull hi Snazzy Snazzy saying it's interesting to know how the lions actually know where to begin and it's it, it'll be literally through experience so the cubs are experiencing where the adults are actually feeding but it's also where they can actually get in and sometimes you see them actually testing <laughs> sure she's really battling there but testing the areas out so it's basically where the softer tissue is I say around the anus uh, around the throat and the belly so that's that's the three points that they tend to start entering the carcass we've got another female coming in see if she can have another go at the the, uh, the buffalo and I'd just like to say if everybody's enjoying the drives it's been wonderful to be here but I must thank one of my students who has actually made it possible and my aunt for actually taking over my research
for me back in the UK. So thank you very much to Ellie and my aunt Helen. And I'm hoping that you are watching this because they are big cat lovers as well. So if anybody wants to thank anybody for bringing me out here, obviously uh, Safari Live for allowing me to come back and experience these wonderful moments with you live on Safari Live. But uh, they also made it possible as well. So definitely give a thank to them <laughs> if you see them in the chat room. Because <laughs> this is amazing. Hi David. David asking if it's beneficial to have a male around to chase away the hyenas. And it can be, it's, it's, again, it's more the numbers game. So we've got the four, the five females here. So depending on how many hyenas came in, um, the four, well, the, sorry, the five lionesses would be able to fend off quite a number of hyenas. But if 30 hyenas came in, I think even having the boys here would not, uh, would not help them. But looking for them, I don't think our clans here in the northern Sabi Sands tend to get up to those numbers. I think our clan around here is probably about 15. The big males might be beneficial to have if all 15 clan members uh, were to descend. But it, again, it depends on how hungry they are. I mean, if, if they'd only just brought down the buffalo and then the hyenas came in, they would still be very uh, hungry, so they'll be very aggressive, whereas they're probably going to be a little bit more docile now. <laughs> Thanks, Enzo. <laughs> Sorry for that, everybody. <laughs> I wasn't keeping an eye on what Senzo was doing to give you the warning. <laughs> Sure, she's really trying to get in there. Look at that. <laughs> A workout with the buffalo, sure. Look at that pure muscle. You will not find an ounce of fat on those cats. And there you go. There's the tracks that we were following this morning. So the three lobes in the back pad and those oval toes. And of course, they retract their claws just like your domestic cat at home. Hi, Bobby. Bobby, ooh, a little bit of aggression there. No, nope, that's been <laughs> you told off. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's one thing about life, she's just toileting. Someone should tell them not to toilet where you're eating. But Bobby wanting to know, will they eat the brain? And they're not going to be able to get to it. Their jaws are just not going to be strong enough to crack the skull, but a hyena could. They have incredibly strong jaws. I think, I think it's been found that lions have uh, I think it's a PSI of pounds per square inch. I think it's about 600, four to 600 pounds per square inch strength in the jaw. Whereas the hyena is about 1,500. So a huge difference in pressure that they can actually exert on the bone. And that's where really the hyenas come into their own because they, they are the scavengers, but they're also the caretakers of the bush. So they actually do clean up carcasses. So they will take the bones and chew them up and that's a part of their, big part of their diet. So they'll be able to crack open their buffalo skull and get to the brain, because that's very nutritious as well. Adam, also don't forget the, mar the marrow. It's the best part and it is also very nutritious. Uh, so lions will be able to crack some bones some of the small but 
uh, certainly the larger bones, the leg bones, the skull, they're not going to be, and the vertebrate, not going to be eating much of that. They might chew a little bit on it, just to get the calcium and the phosphorus. And you'll also find other animals then utilizing the bones. Believe it or not, giraffes will eat bone. So once they've been cleaned of any meat, so it's quite normal this time of year to see a giraffe eating a bone. Porcupines, tortoises, will eat uh, the hyena dung that's got a lot of the calcium in the dung. Hi Steel Mac. That pretty much is a lion's life. Eat, sleep and drink. <laughs> Bit of hunting in between. It sounds like Tristan is really having an amazing elephant sighting. Having a lot of fun with those and I think he's got a bull this time. Oh, hello everybody, sorry. <laughs> I've just realised somehow I've managed to unplug myself. <laughs> you snuck up on me. I'm hoping you in are enjoying seeing the lions enjoying their dinner. Sounds like uh, the bull elephants were quite impressive by all accounts. Oh, look at that. Nice clean teeth. She seems to be deciding whether she's uh, going to flop down or carry on eating and she she's kind of in limbo at the moment. So, it sounds like uh, Tristan's having quite a close encounter. <laughs> so I think you definitely need to jump on board with him and see how close that encounter really is. Oh. How's it everybody? So it looks like one of the females has actually got up to walk off and I think possibly she might go down to drink. She's heading in that general direction. Look at that pink sky. How beautiful. It is so, so peaceful. Still no movement from the scavengers, but they'll be waking up very soon, I'm sure. As I say, that buffalo is starting to smell quite strong. The wind's picked up a little bit. It's actually blowing away from us. So if there are any scavengers out tonight, they might just smell it. just about make out the head and the skin. I think one of the lionesses seemed to try to move the carcass a little bit more but she uh, didn't really come right with that and she decided game over flop back down again. But the more they tug and pull at it the more it's going to stretch and they're going to be able to access some of the meat. I think they're possibly going for the meat around the legs now. I was going to say, you're, you're being very uh, calm about it. <laughs> oh, 
Hi Andy, asking if the animals can relax now, knowing that the lions are fed. Well, they, they don't really know. And also there is actually a lot of lions in the area. So even though these lions are feeding, there are other lion prides out there. So they, they don't let the guard down. If you let your guard down in the bush, that could mean the difference between life and death. So everyone, even if this happens, everyone is still very much in predator alert mode, which is very important. And I have seen lion, a lion actually um, go, that they actually had a kill, it was a wildebeest, and she went off to hunt something else. And as I say, these bellies aren't huge. If something walked right into them, there might be one or two lionesses that almost uh, not enjoy the hunt, but have excess energy. I think that was what happened with this other lioness, and she just went off and killed something else. So it was uh, it was quite an interesting behaviour. But if they are nice and full, chances are they're not going to move too much. So I'm sure we're going to be checking back in with them tomorrow. And I hope you have enjoyed this action-packed safari this afternoon. It sounds like there's been some wonderful sightings with the young elephants. Really quite amazing to watch. And uh, as I say, actually catching up with the lions. We caught up with little Intima earlier on as well. Every day is different in the bush and this is what is so magic that we can actually share this with you from the middle of the bush live and tomorrow morning you get a chance to see it all again from the Mara this time something completely new whatever's happening that day but at least you get to experience it live so do tune in for that tomorrow and we're going to be back here in the Selby Sands tomorrow evening so I hope you can join us for that. She's still deciding <laughs> whether she wants to finish some dinner or not. But it's been absolutely magic. And I must say thank you very much everybody for all your questions and all your comments. It really does uh, add something very special to the show. And it's always great to hear from you whether you're a new viewer or an old viewer. It really is great. And as I say... I just love sharing this with you and certainly for the team as well. So thank you for joining us. Do enjoy the rest of your day or enjoy your evening and we'll see you tomorrow at the Mara. For myself and the rest of the crew here at Safari Live, take care and go well. Good night.